It wasn't pretty, but some late game offense. Gives the Bills a 14-9 victory over the Giants, improving to 4-2 and on the season. This week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. My name is Justin and I am your host. Uh, the show is on the Buffalo Fanbase Podcast Network. Um, great shows every day of the week coming out. So if you made it this far, you found this episode, uh, make sure you check out some of the other uh, podcasters on the network. Um, tons of great stuff coming out. Mafia, we got a game to talk about, and this game was more stressful than I, I would have liked it to be. And honestly, going into this game, um, the Bills were giant favorites. I think it was something like a 15-point favorite. And, you know, that, that made sense for a lot of reasons, right? Um, Giants line is all kinds of banged up. Their, back, their starting quarterback is out. Uh, Tyrod's in. Um, just all kinds of things. And honestly, I when I first saw this line come out, I, I didn't expect this game to be that kind of blowout. I thought it could get there. Um, but I thought there's just kind of too much familiarity going on with this game for it to be like an absolute beatdown. Um you obviously have Dayball coaching the Giants, you know, who better to put together a game plan to stop Josh Allen than the the guy who helped develop Allen, right? Um kind of knows him in and out and and really what he likes to do, what they can do to to slow him down. Um and then you have other things like Tyrod Taylor starting in this game. Um, I don't necessarily think Tyrod Taylor is a better quarterback than Daniel Jones. I think it might be pretty close. Um, but for this game in particular, um, I honestly felt like Tyrod gives them a better chance to win than Daniel Jones. I mean, I know the players, the pieces, you know, some of the schemes are different. Um, but Tyrod Taylor was here, you know, with McDermott, um, you know, saw variations of the defenses that he was running every day in practice. Um, like I said, the, the scheme has changed a little bit. A lot of the pieces have changed, um, but kind of like the core philosophies of McDermott still exist. Um, so I thought for this particular matchup, Tyrod Taylor was giving them a better chance to win. All that being said, I, I wasn't expecting a five point game. <laughs> I expected it to, you know, at least feel a little bit more comfortable. I mean, the offense not scoring any points in the first half. It, it was challenging. It was uh, it wasn't the most fun game to watch. Um, so I want to start out talking about some of the things I didn't like from this game. And there was kind of a lot to not like in this game, right? This is the second game in a row where the offense is coming out kind of looking listless and we saw it in the Jaguars game you know they scored points late and and almost had you know a rid ridiculous comeback um in this game the offense does end up scoring points late um does enough to get the win but against a lot of teams in the league that that game last night wasn't getting it done um one of the things I didn't like, and this is something that we've talked about a lot this year, um, is the ancillary weapons outside of digs. And, you know, I, I've seen kind of this like stat uh, comparison from this year to last year, you know, pretty much saying like swap out some of the players in their production for a different player. Um, basically, the offense is kind of on track from where it was last season. And, Cool, that's great and all. Um, but to me, this kind of feels a lot like last season where we just have like these explosive games where we just absolutely beat somebody down. And then we have games where nothing's doing and nothing outside of Diggs is working. And we saw that last year, you know, that was good enough to win a bunch of games. That was good enough to get us to the playoffs and win some games. Uh, but at the end of the day, it wasn't enough to get it done. And I'm seeing much more of the same this year. Um, it's just kind of outside digs. I mean, the the next closest 
person you have to digs, even in terms of just straight receptions, was Gabe Davis. Um, Diggs has 16 targets, 10 catches, and then Davis is next with three receptions uh, for what, 21 yards. Um, one of those, you know, he gets some run after catch and it ends up being a fumble. Another thing I didn't like in this game. Um, just need more out of those those secondary weapons. And I know Dalton Kincaid uh, was hurt in this game. And, you know, we're, we're kind of hoping that he is able to, you know, take some more targets, open up the offense a little bit. And we, we've seen some production from him early in the season. Um, but I haven't seen him be Cole Beasley in a tight end's body. Um, I haven't seen the level of, I guess, kind of down the field, you know, kind of game-breaking plays. He's kind of, to me, been thus far this season, kind of like a possession possession player move the chains and that's great you know you you need that guy third and four sits in the zone gets five yards um that's awesome but the way the way he was kind of advertised the way he was looking in the offseason it looked like he was going to be that guy plus you know seam stretcher field stretcher big play you know kind of number two receiver type deal um i understand he's a rookie he's still coming along now he's you know, dealing with a concussion. Um, and I'm willing to be patient with that. But when we get to the end of this year, I don't think we're going to be able to get over the hump um, with the game plan being we're targeting Diggs 16 times. It's it's just not sustainable. It's, it's great. I love Diggs. And, you know, he's one of the players that can really get it done by himself like that. Um, but when it, when it comes to playoff football, it's just not going to be enough. Um, another thing I didn't like kind of goes hand in hand with this is, um, just the lack of commitment to the run game early. Um, and it, it was becoming really frustrating for me because that the passing game wasn't sustaining drives. Um, and you know, it's, it's not like we weren't moving the ball at, at all. Um, like last week in Jacksonville, the offense was completely stagnant. Um, this week we saw, you know, first drive, there was a, a real rare drop from Diggs that hit him right in his hands. Probably would have been a first down. Um, we saw the Gabe Davis fumble. Um, later on in the game, we saw Dawson Knox with kind of a drop, kind of bad Allen throw, kind of short-armed it to him. Uh, but I felt like there's so many opportunities in this game where we could have leaned on the run game more. Um, and at some point I looked down at the stat sheet and we got 18 pass attempts to six rushing attempts and like, whatever, if you're, if there's stuff in the run game, uh, that's fine. So sometimes you got to pass more. Um, but at that juncture, it was between, um, Latavius Murray and James Cook. They had a combined six carries and they were averaging like seven yards per carry. So like you're having some struggles getting the passing game going with some consistency. Uh, you wanted to bring in this, this running game to complement Josh Allen to have it not be, you know, these games where he has to do everything himself. You, you had the run game going and you just, you just didn't continue leaning into it. And then that, that um, Dawson Knox play I'm talking about at the end of the game, um, part of me part of me likes the aggressive call you know you you have that play and this was you know a great play that dorsey drew up as much criticism criticism as i have for him in this game um he's got dawson knox running wide open i think there was a little bit too much excitement for the game to end and uh josh Allen just kind of short arms it um uh, but it looked like knox had the chance to catch it all that to say you know we're kind of in a spot where we're trying to trying to kill off the clock and finish the game um whether or not you got the first down if you ran the ball there um you're forcing the giants to use their last time out um so didn't didn't love kind of the running back usage here and 
to Dorsey's credit, in the second half, there was, you know, a lot more carries. We end up with um, 26, yeah, 26 combined carries between Latavius Murray and and James Cook. So ends up being a pretty productive game on the ground. I just kind of wish first half we we saw it leaned into more. Um, and that kind of leads me into my next point of I, I didn't think this was a very good um, play calling game for Dorsey. Um, I'm kind of hesitant to throw the criticism at the at the coordinators all the time. Um, I think it's kind of easy targets, low hanging fruits of, you know, oh, nothing's working. It must be the coordinator's fault, you know, but there there's an extent of it of, you know, the ball was moving. Ken Dorsey didn't make Gabe Davis fumble the ball. He didn't make player X drop a pass. Um, I think there's there's more execution to it than than often the coordinate coordinator takes the blame for. Um, but in this game, I, I didn't really like mm, too much of what he was calling. Um, I personally think Josh Allen is a better quarterback under center. Um, I think it helps him with his rhythm, um, helps him kind of he, he's reading the field as he's dropping back and just kind of the the amount of shotgun that we use um it's kind of hard for me to wrap my brain around um i also don't like our running game doing so much out of the shotgun um you know the defense all all the players just kind of get moving and that half second that your running back is is behind on the motion um it, it just leads to so many more tackles behind the line of scrimmage it, it doesn't really it's just not for me um and i think the play action game is also really underutilized with josh allen um i think it's something that's super underrated from him is like just how crafty he is um with the ball in his hand you know the sleight of hand he's kind of high knit and rolling out um if anybody watched hard knocks they did like a whole 20 minutes on uh Aaron Rodgers like coaching up Zach Wilson on on how to do things like this. And it, it's something that Allen's really freaking good at. And there's just not enough play action for me. Um, you don't even have to be successful in your ground game to run an effective play action. Um, but it does help. And in a game like this, we were having a successful run game. Um, so I would have liked to see... Um, more play action sprinkled in there too. Uh, I will say to Dorsey's credit, the um, the touchdown drawn up for um, Hardy. It's kind of a play that we've seen uh, the wrinkles kind of sprinkled in, used in different ways. Um, haven't seen a ton of success on it, but that was a beautiful play. You know, you get Diggs kind of in there as a distraction, and he's been torching torching the Giants all game so they they bite right on that and Hardy pretty much walks into the end zone um so I like that um there's going to be some other things that I liked about in this game we're going to talk about that on the other side of the break stick around hey this is brother Bill now back to the show Bill's Mafia welcome back in and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast if you've made it this far um do ask a favor that you like, share, subscribe, um, tell a friend about the show. It really helps us keep this going. I want to dive right back in and talk about things that I like from this game. And the most important thing that I can say that I like from this game uh, is that we won. Uh, you you hear all kinds of like sports cliches about, you know, oh, we're not going to care about how it happened in January. Uh, you know, wins a win's a win's a win. And while all of that is you know played to death it also happens to be played to death because it's very true um the nfl is tough to win and just kind of looking at this weekend we saw you know the chiefs barely survive we see the 49ers lose we saw um the eagles lose to the jets which 
by the way, the, the Jets defense being elite and giving all of these elite teams fits um, makes me feel a little bit better about week one. Um, but at any rate, you know, the NFL is it, it's a tough league to win in. So at the end of the day, I'm worried about what happened in the win column. Um, but I do think, you know, some of the context of how you got there mattered. Um, and the first thing I want to shout out that I really liked is just the defense as a whole. Um, I think we have some weak links in week, excuse me, weak links in there. Um, I don't think Elam had a great game. Um, really can't wrap my head around the player that I'm seeing now versus the player that we saw at the end of last year. Um, but especially considering all of the injuries that we have on this defense and how young the, these replacement guys are coming in. Uh, I mean, I texted my buddy at some point, I think it was around halftime, and I was like, the offense sucks today, but the bright side is, with the way our defense is playing, if you get to 10, you win this game. I thought, you know, somewhere in there that the Giants might get past nine, but and it ends up being true. I mean, you're talking a defense that just lost Daquan Jones, just lost Matt Milano, Trey White the week before that. Um, then this week during practice, you know, you also have Dane Jackson go out. So, I mean, you're you're talking about Elam being out there. And he's your fourth cornerback. Uh, you have Terrell Bernard, who is on his sixth start. You have Dorian Williams coming in for his second start. Um, just thought overall, like, there wasn't any like crazy player performance that took over the game, anything like that. It was just a great collective team effort. Um, there are a couple dudes that did really stand out though. Um, Leonard Floyd is in my opinion, looking at looking like one of the best additions that we've made to this team, um, in quite some time, um, I believe he hit six and a half sacks last night and you know that that was primarily without von miller playing on the other side um that's you know playing in a role where he's seeing a lot of rotation um he's just really he's been really consistent and good at getting after the quarterback and not just getting the pressures but getting home and the other dude that has been impressing me is AJ Epinesa, and this is not one that I saw coming. And I think this adds, I guess, some like really interesting layers to the off season. Uh, we know he's in a contract year, and you know he's been pretty meh so far in his career. Um, he did end up with, I believe, six sacks last year, um, but he put up his fourth sack of the season last night. Um, he's also been really effective with um, batting down passes at the line when when he's not able to get home. And it, it, it went from somebody that I never expected to get a second contract with us to how fast is he, you know, kind of pricing himself out of Buffalo. Um, so I think that's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Um, the most important thing here is think last night was uh, a real obvious uh, indication that being picked the right defensive end to trade um, playing against the Giants where we traded Boogie Basham didn't no effect on the game and uh, Epinesa is out there making some plays um, so I did like that um, I liked that the run game like I talked about earlier um, was very effective. I would have liked to see it more early in the game. Um, but I liked, you know, towards the end of the game uh, where we, you know, come out of halftime and the offense needs to put points up on the board, needs to get the ball moving, needs, you know, a little bit of a jump start. We were kind of able to get that through the running game and you kind of usually see it flip-flopped. You know, the run game's failing. You need the jump start. You, got, you need your passing game to carry you. Um, we came out of the half and just really leaned into the run game and, you know, end up having really good success. James Cook, 14 carries, 71 yards. Um, Latavius Murray, 12 carries, 45 yards. Um, just overall pretty 
pretty good game that we've kind of been seeing from the run game. Um, and I particularly like this bouncing back from the Jaguars game um, where, you know, especially for my guy Cook, he ends up with negative yards over in London. Um, so it was nice to see him kind of have a bounce back game despite, you know, Murray lining up and kind of being the, the starter back, um, which by the way, is also something I kind of liked in this game. I, I don't hate uh, Murray being the first one on the field and kind of, you know, getting a little physical with the opponent and then having, you know, kind of the, the speed option of Cook come in. Um, interesting to see what they do with that going forward. But um, as long as the touches are shaking out, you know, somewhat even like typically with the advantage going to Cook, um, I don't hate that as an option. Uh, the other thing got to talk about that I loved in this game, Stefan Diggs. I mean, I think he has over 100 yards in every game but one this season, maybe, maybe two. Um, but he's been damn close to 100 or over pretty much every game this season. Um, and, you know, he's been productive throughout his whole time in Buffalo. Um, but to me, he, he looks different this year. Um, I don't see anybody slowing him down i don't see anybody you know really imposing themselves on digs it's kind of like he's he's roasting everybody put in front of him and i mean i i feel like it's kind of indicative of that when you know a third of the bills total offense goes to digs and you know what what does it look like if they were able to take him take digs out of the equation because you're you're not really getting threats from anybody else on the offense um so you know you you got to think wink martindale you got to think brian dable are, are going into halftime like really trying to eliminate digs from the game plan and you know he he was slowed down a little bit in the second half um but still just <laughs> when you're the only guy that's really you know threatening the defense and you're still able to come away with 10 catches 100 yards uh that's that's a great game um lastly i just want to say that i i like the resiliency uh of this team uh it was an ugly win it it was not fun to watch it wasn't exciting it wasn't sexy um but there was a couple instances in this game where uh, I thought in particular the defense really made stands when they had to. Um, and also the offense kind of push comes to shove. They needed to get to that 14 points. They figured out a way. Um, but the defense in particular, um, we saw right before half, kind of that goal line stand and kind of some some interesting uh, couple plays there from Tyrod Taylor um, ends up you know, scrambling in the red zone with, you know, time winding. And then, you know, right at the goal line, he checks into a run play and, you know, the, the defense makes a stand there and ends up being, you know, the clock runs out. They don't even get the field goal attempt, um, which everything else equal completely changes the complexity of this game. You're talking, you know, that nine points at the half, all of a sudden they just need a field goal on that last drive if, if everything else stays equal. Um, so kind of a blunder on the Giants part there. Um, <laughs> Dable was pretty pretty hot going into the half on that. Um, but, you know, for what it's worth, that Tyrod is checking into um, that run play because they're getting the look that they want for it. Now, it wasn't a great decision to run in that with no timeouts. Um, but for what it's worth, he checked into that play because he, he thought that they could run and score and the Bills make a goal line stand. Um, so I thought that was impressive. And then the the last last couple of plays of the game, I mean, the, the Giants get down right on the goal line. Elam took a, a pass interference or a holding, you know, in the end zone. So it goes right to the one. There's an untimed down. Now, I do think Taron Johnson got away with uh, a hold on that play. Um, I will say that if, if that 
if the roles were reversed, I would be on this podcast today talking about how we got boned on the last play of the game. Um, those don't really tend to go our way too often. Um, I, I often feel like we're the ones catching catching the wrong side of the officials. So I, there's nothing I can do. I'm, I'm going to take this. I'm going to be happy. Um, there's nothing to say that, you know, given one more untimed down, the Giants would have scored, wouldn't have scored. Um, but I thought Taron Johnson did kind of read that play nicely and could have been a pretty easy touchdown without him there. Um, so good on him for making the stop. But again, the defense just kind of stiffening up when when they needed to. Um, now, did I want this this game to come down to the last play? Absolutely not. Uh, but like I said, we're not going to be thinking about how we won this game in January. Um, just got to get that win. And honestly, with the Jets winning yesterday, this would have felt like such, you know, despite it not being a good a good game for the Bills, I feel like it would have felt so much more deflating if we were talking about a loss today. Not just because of the opponent, not just because, you know, the team didn't look good or anything. Um, with the Jets winning yesterday and the Bills losing to the Jets in the beginning of the season, um, that would have dropped us into third place in the AFC East, which is, would have been crazy. I, I don't even care if it was for a week or two. There's This team has no business being in third place in the division. Um so there's there's a lot to figure out with this team. Um, a lot of warts to fix on offense. Um, hopefully Kincaid gets healthy and comes back in and, and we start kind of being able to get him to be a little bit more of a focal point and really be able to expand that passing game outside of Diggs, um, which I think is going to be immensely important down the stretch um, to be winning meaningful football games football games down the road um but for right now it's a win i'll take it um we're gonna be looking ahead to next week we're taking on the patriots um who stink this year (laughs) um but this is another game where i think it's going to be a, a much more difficult game than um anticipated and who knows maybe josh allen comes out and has another perfect game against the Patriots and it's an absolute boat race I would love to see that Um, but very similar to this game there's a lot of familiarity between the two teams Um, Bill Belichick has seen Josh Allen quite a number of times at this point Um, and for what it's worth for the most part you know since Allen's gotten here and Tom Brady went away uh Bills have kind of had their way with the Patriots. Hopefully that continues. And uh, what I'm looking forward to most in this game is kind of seeing some of these younger guys on defense getting more time on task. Um, Terrell Bernard has been fantastic since coming into this this starting lineup. Um, And Dorian Williams, I thought, looked pretty good yesterday. Um, Obviously has some massive shoes to fill um, for Milano, but all things considered, I thought he and his, we'll call it two starts now, I thought the first one he was kind of playing like so fast and free that sometimes he was over pursuing plays or, you know, just missing at full speed. Um thought he, he still had some, you know, road bumps in this game. Um but I like that he's playing fast and free, and he looks like he can he can be an inadequate starter um, that we won't lose because of. Um, hopefully, still we get to see uh, Milano miraculously return this season for a playoff run. But I feel a lot better about getting by without him now, having seen Dorian Williams for a couple games than I did, you know, the moment that he he went out. So. A lot to look forward to this season. Um, enjoy this win as best you can. I know, I know it wasn't fun, but try to keep in context how bad our team was for how long. And, you know, even when it's not a sexy win, it's a win that we were able to get. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. 
Um, thank you for joining me. Like I said, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Um, that really helps us out. And take a second to check out the website, uh, thewanderingbuff.com. Um, Jake's done great work on the website. Um, got some sweet t-shirt designs. We got some articles we've written. Um, we have this wandering Buffalo, uh, breast cancer awareness shirt, um, that we kind of put together. Um, obviously something that I'm going through very personally with my wife. Um, but there's so many people affected by cancer. So, um, the proceeds from any of the, any of these shirts that we sell, um, we're going to be donating to, um, the American Cancer Association. So anything you can do helps out. Uh, appreciate you joining me tonight and we will see you next week after hopefully we take down the Patriots as always go bills.